I'm going to talk about the intensity timing track of these things and we haven't seen this very often where you see two tropical systems hit potentially the United States at the same time. So we're going to be talking about that in this episode of State of the Weather Address. Also stay tuned guys, Weather Decoded 2.0 is coming Monday. Brand new graphics, much easier to read the graphics and a whole new experience. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe for that if you're new. Comment below, have you ever experienced a tropical storm? or hurricane and that is where I've been so I've been over the past few weeks developing our own custom models for this channel so I've been pretty busy with that but we're just gonna give you a quick update because this is a pretty unique scenario we got two different tropical systems 14 out here in the Caribbean and then we got 13 kind of just sitting out in the middle of the Atlantic and these are both headed towards the United States over the next uh, week or so if you look at the track by the NHC. We'll look at the models here in a second, but you know, this is right now, it's tropical storm just about, and this is going to really potentially strengthen as we head towards the weekend and into early Monday and Tuesday, and the NHC is actually forecasting this to track into a hurricane. So your official source of weather information should always be the NHC. They put out these little public outlooks every uh, few hours but we go into some educational stuff here on the channel and in depth but you can see hurricane potential as we head towards tuesday and it's going to be very very close to hitting uh, florida which we'll go over here in a second now the tropical storm force wind speed probabilities you know we've already got up to a 50 percent chance all the way out to florida but again they're forecasting hurricane strength potentially and then this uh other uh system out here, 14, you can see very high in Mexico as it tracks into Mexico, and then uh, a little bit less of a chance as we go into the Gulf. I think that system is going to be the weaker of the bunch, but you can see this system forecasted to only be a tropical storm, but it should uh, weaken just a bit as it gets towards the United States. Could be dealing with a little bit of a trough. And there's your uh, wind speeds there. This is the concern right now. We got a, a just a baking Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico and Western Atlantic really uh, temperature anomalies above average so very warm conditions that's going to help generate hurricanes this is going to be our models now and we're looking at the GFS and we'll compare it with the Canadian this is 48 hours out what I'm gonna do first is I want to show you kind of what's going on here this is uh, our uh, 13 and this is 14 right here so that's what we're gonna want to watch on the models Okay, so you're looking at 14 here. You can kind of see some spiraling developing in the cloud. This is uh, still trying to get organized, but you can see a little bit of rotation right here. And this thing right here is a trough. Now, troughs typically suppress these hurricanes or the hurricanes will get latched on and they'll turn into kind of a low pressure, extra tropical type cyclone when they hit the land. But these troughs can inhibit things. The timing of this trough will be critical. This trough is expected to move to the east and ridging is expected to come in here. Here's the trough in the GFS. You can see height anomalies. That essentially means lower heights than average. And you see that dip right there, that's a trough. Typically little storm systems and wind shear develop along this and that kind of kills hurricanes. When you have very strong upper level winds, it stretches those hurricanes out and it kind of just keeps them from organizing. But there is a ridge moving in and as you see on, as we head towards early next week, and we'll go 102 here, and this is Monday now. You can see the ridge is kicking in. That trough is way off to the east. You get some ridging and there's your little system there and your other system right there. And, those will go kind of right in between those into the weakness and that really could be the uh, the, the game changer here if that uh, shear is weak all right so we're going to look at monday here this well this is going to be saturday excuse me and so this is not too far here now you can see 13 sitting right here it's a 105 pretty weak still this is the mslp this is by the gem computer model and you can see that right there pretty weak still but uh, generally weak winds maybe you know tropical storm force in both areas here on uh, saturday and this is uh, measuring the 850 millibar or the 10 millibar wind speeds so this is near the surface now you can look at the gfs and uh, you can kind of compare it this is for the exact same time the gfs just a little bit farther to the west or the east northeast with both of these systems especially this one kind of weaker as well uh, except for this system where it's got stronger winds but this is looking a little bit farther up in the atmosphere but overall nothing uh, concerning at the moment 
But as you can see, uh, you can look at the, this is the simulated uh, brightness, infrared reflectivity. You can see the system hanging out right there. And then the other uh, 14 hanging out here just north of Mexico. And uh, we'll watch these track. But first we're gonna look at the theta E. This is kind of measuring the moisture and instability in these higher values, a lot more moisture and instability in the ocean here. This is going to be 1,000 to 200 millibars, so near the surface to way up high. And uh, you can see that there is a little bit of instability to the west and northwest, so we could see some strengthening. And then also just off the coast of Florida, so that's something to watch. And then also off the Gulf there, so we could see some strengthening when they move into those regions. A little bit of dry air here for 13, so that's going to be a, a problem earlier on. We're going to have some drier air potentially in the north and west side of this thing. So it's gonna struggle for a bit. Uh, this system, not as bad, but there is drier air up to the northwest towards Texas. So this system could have some problems. But when this uh, 13 moves in to uh, the Florida region, watch what will happen here soon, because I think we'll have a little more moisture. The kind of rotation here, you can see overall, this system's gonna be more organized. Uh, there'd be 13 out there. And uh, the vorticity, this is measuring the spin in the atmosphere. Uh, very tight circulation here with 14, 13 is a little more loosely organized. But this is the wind shear, and you can see uh, the wind shear is really going to kill the hurricane. So the areas where you see less wind shear, like this dome right here, that's a little bit more favorable. And you can see that trough right there. That's that trough I was talking about, higher wind shear. And you can kind of see how it's kind of stretching this one out a little bit. It's going to be dealing with a little bit of shear with 14 here north of Mexico. But 13 has certainly more potential with less wind shear. As we go towards 78 now, so we're going a little bit farther in advance. This is Sunday. The GFS has the system here almost north of Cuba now. And uh, the other system, kind of weak, just north and sitting right off Mexico. And this is right on Sunday afternoon. You can see that that was the GEM and then the GFS, pretty weak. The GFS is pretty weak on both of these systems, but that'll change here. But you can see uh, your system right there, north of Cuba. It's a little bit farther to the northwest or northeast on both of those systems. So the GFS is weaker, but it's also farther northeast. Simulated brightness. Not terribly impressive on this system. This system, uh, a little bit more impressive there. The instability, you can see theta E pretty strong here near Cuba, but just as this system moves to the north and northwest, you'd expect some strengthening with all this energy sitting out here. So we should start to see that. You can see dry air, still kind of a concern near uh, Cuba and uh, Florida with the system. And also West End, there's a little bit of dry air with uh, 13 as well. So both 13 and 14. Uh, you can see a little bit of weakening in the vorticity fields. And then you can see this trough is now moving to the east here. This is still Sunday. Here's your uh, uh, 13, or excuse me, that's 14. I'm getting these confused here. But you got one right there and one right there. And you can see that uh, the system north of Cuba, much less wind shear. This is this first system north of Mexico, definitely going to be dealing with wind shear with that troughing. So do not expect that to be a major system, but a tropical storm system potentially. Okay, so this is the gem now on 108. So that's going to be about Tuesday, uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning or so. You can see that this first system rapidly strengthens, you know, as it crosses that instability threshold and, and increasing moisture values now. So that's something we're going to want to really watch here is what happens to that trough is that trough exit in time if it does like it's forecasted now which the trends are and if we have enough instability and moisture just north of cuba we could be dealing with a hurricane now as it heads towards florida and if this system tracks into the gulf that could give it even more buying time to suck in more moisture and also you know the exiting of that trough and the entrance of that ridge and if this thing stays, you know, it could actually what it could do if it moves north is it could suck in a little bit of that moisture too from that system. And this could be really concerning for the Panhandle of Florida. So we'll have to watch that, uh, see how much land interaction happens. But you can see that that was the, G, the gem and then this is the GFS. It actually strengthens this system out here. And again, uh, the system to the west is a little bit weaker. Uh, you know, and uh, so we'll go back to that real quick. 
And what we're going to do is we're look at the instability here, and you can definitely see that that instability along Cuba a little bit higher, and then also out here just west of Florida. So that could continue to strengthen. Now, as you can see here, the this is going to be the moisture field, 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity, and you can see 13 out here. A lot better moisture now. A little bit of dry air way to the west, but uh, the moisture fields definitely increase as it gets into the Gulf and near Florida. And so a pretty good stream of moisture there could strengthen the system pretty substantially. And this is going to be on Wednesday. So if you look at Wednesday now on the GFS, this does strengthen the system pretty uh, radically, hits Florida, the panhandle of Florida, pretty strong. And you can see the gem as well. Pretty good agreement there. Only about a 50 to 75 mile spread. You can see that other system pretty weak. So I wouldn't expect for that first system, that would be a 14, to really do much more than tropical storm activity out here. But again, these things can rapidly strengthen. And then you got your hurricane out here, potentially. So I think uh, the better environment is going to be with 13 out here. It's gonna have a little bit more buying time with the exiting of that trough and uh, some decent, um, better moisture supply as we get towards the Panhandle of Florida. You can see the vorticity fields shoot way up, a lot stronger as we head towards uh, the Panhandle of Florida now. And the wind shear, you know, again, it's a little bit of wind shear up here, but it's, it's in a much more favorable environment uh, with that exiting in that trough. And I think this first system, which 14, coming out of the United States, that's gonna be dealing with that trough a little bit more. So either way, we're definitely gonna have to watch these guys and uh, pretty explosive tropical activity and a very warm environment, a lot of conditions set up for some very active tropical systems. So we'll continue to update you guys. Again, subscribe below and stay tuned for Weather Decoded 2.0, a whole new experience coming on Monday here. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you soon.